Wesley Hoyt. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Healthcare System, and it's a pleasure to be before you again this evening to talk about really something special to us, something we've been working on for more than two years now, and that is the newly opened intensive care unit. I say newly opened because as of 10.30 this morning, we brought down our first patient yep. to the new ICU. Bit we'll have, uh, I'll speak a little bit to it, but I also have Joanne Rivera and we have uh, John Miller over here. They were instrumental in designing this, and so they will, they will be the second part of this act. The first act tonight is one of which we're also going to talk about is the MRI. Um, for those who aren't aware, we had, we've had MRI capabilities here for 18 years. That's a long time. It's been the same back. So one of the things we're celebrating is the addition of new MRI, and we have with us tonight Dr. Ted Hobart as well as uh, Raleigh White, our Director of Radiology. And they will give you some more details on what the new magnet entails. But uh, these are things that if you think about how we provide the standard of care that we do, these are tools. That's exactly what they are. They're tools that allow us to deliver the highest quality care we can to our community. Technology is always evolving. It's hard to keep up sometimes. But as we continue to read and we look at the subject matter expertise that you'll hear tonight represented between our clinicians, our radiology technicians, our nurses and all, we are doing a great job of staying abreast of technology and bringing it to your hometown. And so that's why we felt tonight was a good topic to discuss between the ICU and MRI, and we're going to try to tie it into why it's important to you. We know that inevitably, with the 50-something thousand residents we have in Hutchinson and South Hutchinson, folks come to us for care. We're going to be the best. And this is something that's going to help us get there. First act tonight is going to be uh, Dr. Hobart. Uh, we're fortunate to have him because he's going to tell us about this new technology. He's a graduate of the University of Kansas. We get any rock talk here? Any? What? Come on now. I know. A lot of purple in this crowd. I'm yeah, saying. I'm just sitting there thinking because uh, everywhere I go, this this state's kind of divided in half, one way or the other. So I can't believe I didn't get any boos or yays. So. And we're less than a month away from football season. What's up with that? Uh, but he's a graduate of the UK University of Kansas with a Bachelor of Arts in Human Biology. He went to medical school and did a residency in diagnostic radiology at the University of Kansas School of Medicine. He's been a physician with us since 2003, so please welcome me, uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ted Hobart. Welcome, thank you for coming. Is this on? Hello, here we go. Okay, this a little better? Okay, welcome, thanks for coming. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing to you our brand new MRI. It's a Siemens Magnetome Era 1.5 Tesla Magnet. But before I, we talk about the new Era Magnet, I have to uh, uh, say goodbye to our old magnet. It was with us for 18 years. Uh, did a lot, of, a lot of good work for us, a lot of service. It was a workforce over those years. Um, so if you're missed, I didn't uh, get a goodbye. Actually required a uh, since it was over 18 years, the hospital kind of grew up around the uh, the MRI unit. So when it was time to remove it, they had to bring in a 274 foot crane and remove all six tons of the magnet. Um, everything went off without a hitch, so no issues. Everything was very safely performed. Actually, a group out of Oklahoma came came up and did it for us. So pretty unique. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, the Administration Board of Trustees, their vision in helping us become a leader in diagnostic imaging, not only in MRI, but we also have a lot of new, other new equipment in recent years. Two years ago, we got a new CT scanner. About three years ago, we got a new ultrasound unit, so we're pretty well up to date in the uh, diagnostic imaging department. I also want to thank the Foundation. Uh, they funded the project entirely, uh, $2.7 million. 2.2 of it was for the scanner, about 500000 for the building. So I just want to say thank you to them for doing that. Uh, we'll start a little tour of the MRI suite. As you come in, it's very roomy. To your right, you have a, a nice uh, seating area for the family and the patients. Through those doors on the left back here, there is a little locker room back here, which you can see here, with lockable lockers and a seating area and changing room for the patient and a very spacious bathroom. Um, in addition, if you go through the doorway here, there's an area, this is more for inpatients. This is a patient staging area. Uh, for inpatients where they can be waiting for the next scan. Um, there's a nice roomy control area for the um, uh, MRI technologist here. 
and they can see through the window and be watching the patient throughout the entire exam. The room itself, the MRI is housed in, is actually very roomy. Um, you can see a lot of uh, natural light from big window in the back, lots of room for uh, manipulating the table and moving the patient. Um, and rumor has it this is actually a real uh, image from the Hubble telescope. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> yeah, we have to choose from about 30 different Yeah, yeah. Um, so the biggest, the biggest benefit of this scanner is its bore size, the, the size of the gantry here. It's 70 centimeters. That's the largest offered on the market today. Our old scanner was 55 centimeters. Um, so it's a significantly smaller. It doesn't sound like much, but it really is. You can see this is one of our uh, technologists here laying in the gantry. There's actually almost a foot of room between herself and the, and the actual front portion of the, uh, the gantry there. The other thing is the shorter, it's a shorter length tube, so the old scanner would come way out beyond the toes and beyond the head of the, the patient here, however this is significantly shorter and allowing if you're having uh, something in say your hip or knee or foot image, you could have your head sticking out of the magnet the entire time making it significantly more comfortable for the patient. Okay. In addition, uh, for patient comfort, uh, Siemens has developed a quiet suite technology which significantly reduces the noise of MRI. If any of you have had an MRI, they're extremely loud, extremely noisy. Um, and they've come up with a way to reduce the sound pressure by 97%, which also reduces our need for sedating patients and makes it a lot more comfortable for them. Um, we can also communicate with the patient easier during the examination, and uh, there's actually no compromise in image quality. And you can see here, this is, this is where the quiet suite lies in the decibel range, 75 decibels just above ambient noise and just below light traffic, whatever. whereas a conventional, the old MRI is just below basic hit vacuum. So, <laughs> and it really was. I mean, if you ever went, it's, it's terrible when you go there. Uh, so anyways, another, another thing offered by Siemens, they have these advanced workflow software packages for us, and it's basically pre-programmed protocols and scanning claims for the technologists. It really increases the speed and efficiency and accuracy of uh, performing the exam by the technologists, um, as well as increasing patient comfort due to short exam times. Um, it also increases the number of patients we can scan per day. In addition, we're always online 24-7 with Siemens. Um, we have, uh, they, if we have a patient somewhat difficult or a new exam of body parts we haven't scanned before, we can actually download a protocol directly from Siemens to our MRI scanner in real time and have a technologist on the line with them at that time. Um, one of those protocols is the Accelerate Brain. This is, for example, it is 30% faster imaging of the brain. Um, typically, a brain MRI used to run about oh, 25 to 30 minutes. Now they're right around 20 minutes or just below. Um, similar story with the orthopedic exam, shoulders, knees, ankles, 46% um, faster, significantly faster than the old MRI. Um, the biggest enemy of, of imaging for anything, including MRIs, is motion. And MRIs are much more susceptible because the scans take so long. Um, and that can be from, the motion can be from anything, you know, anxiety, pain, claustrophobia, uh, unintentional tremors, uh, inability to follow commands, um, and also just breathing. We all, we all need to breathe, right? So. That makes it difficult sometimes for us. But again, Siemens has come up with some ways around that. Um, they have a freeze-it technology, and this is a four-day-old neonate. <clears throat> and obviously, they have a little difficulty understanding commands that hold still. So old scanner on the left, just a, basically a non-diagnostic image, uh, new scanner on the right. Uh, they found a way to accommodate for the motion and put together an image that's uh, diagnostic. Again, uh, the other thing is breathing motion. Um, Siemens is kind of way in around that. This is conventional MRI with a motion artifact, basically non-diagnostic image. And this is with current technology. This patient is breathing throughout the entire examination. Very clear, very diagnostic. You can see great detail. And this is, these are actually, some of these are stock images, some of these are current images. We've only had the MRI up and running about three weeks. So um, some of this, these are actually images from our current scanner. And just beautiful detail, free breathing technique, um, very, very great images for this. Um, some other advanced techniques that we use for, to aid us in interpretation, there's a warp, uh, it's called a metal artifact reduction. We'll go through some images on these in a second. There's a resolved diffusion which we use to image the brain looking for strokes. And there's also non-contrast angiography we can use to look at patients, the arteries in the body or the legs. 
So the warp, the metal reduction artifact, we use this with patients that have uh, knee prostheses or hip prostheses, and if they have some pain and they need to figure out a diagnosis, we were basically hampered by the metal creating a giant artifact. You can't see anything of any value in the knee on this old image. With the current scanner, there's just a little bit of uh, the artifact in the knee joint space itself, but otherwise you can see the bone of the distal femur, the tibia, and the patella, and you can see the, the tendons and ligaments just fine, so it helps quite a bit with that. Also, same similar story in the spine. Patient that has uh, spinal fusion, screws and plates in the spine, cause lots of artifact here, non-diagnostic. Much better here, still a little bit, but certainly you can see what's going on here in the spinal canal just fine. Similar story here, you can see just fine in the spinal canal. Um, the fusion weight images are <clears throat> a sequence in MRI of the brain that we use to detect strokes. Now, they never have been known to be very anatomically pretty, but they're fantastic for what they're looking for. So they, they have, on the old scanner, they had a significant amount of artifact, and, you know, anteriorly and posteriorly here. This patient is actually from our old scanner, came in three years ago to our ER, and was diagnosed with a stroke here. The same patient came in three weeks ago on the new scanner. You can see the difference between the two images. You can see so much more detail in the newer scanner. Um, and we diagnosed him with a stroke too, but you can see how small this is. This is only about three millimeters. And we probably, I hate to say never, but we probably would not have seen that on the old scanner. Um, the angiography we can perform is really interesting. So um, patients that have renal failure, um, typically you have to have a study done with some sort of IV contrast, either a, a standard angiogram, a CT angiogram, or even you can do contrast uh, angiograms with MRI. With the new technology, we can do make, have beautiful angiograms without any sort of contrast whatsoever. So it really opens up a lot of patients to an exam that we haven't been able to do before. This is basically the aorta here, one kidney, the other kidney, the renal arteries coming out, nice and normal, uh, beautiful study here. Uh, again, another uh, non-contrast angiogram, basically looking from the mid-abdomen all the way to the ankles. Beautiful detail all the way down. Um, this is a blow-up of the calf vessels. You can see just all the minutia and detail you can see without any IV contrast. Uh, again, a new, just an example of the old scanner versus the new scanner. Um, these were done in our hospital. Um, patient came in five months ago uh, with some neck pain. Uh, made a diagnosis here. Came in uh, about three weeks ago and had a scan because the pain had gotten worse. But you can just see, just, just noting that the better detail and clarity on the image on the right versus the old scanner. It, the old scanner did a great job. It was fine. Um, I kind of equate it to looking at a picture from an iPhone 6 versus an iPhone 10, for lack of a better uh, comparison. But uh, anyways, the new one is significantly better. Um, and we were able to perform a lot more exams, a lot more comfortable with patients. So we're extremely happy to be able to you know, provide this technology and, and uh, the capability for our patients here in, in the city and in south central Kansas. So thank you for your time. What did you do with the old scanner? Well, I got traded in, and they're going to re they're going to refurbish it, and then they'll sit a minute to sell it, or somehow I don't know what they'll do with it to another community that probably could make use of it. But yeah, right, right, right. It still will work. Any other questions for Dr. Hobart? Go well, ahead, free free ask. Yes, sir. For those of us with pacemakers. Uh huh. Uh, is this an improvement? Uh, it's basically this. There's not a change based on the MRI itself, unfortunately. Um, and it's always per device on the pacemaker side. The basic premise or the problem with having a pacemaker are two things. The pacemaker interferes with the actual electronics and the, and the regular frequencies of the pacemaker. We can take care of that. We can have the, the, the um, they have a pacemaker technologist that will come in and assess your pacemaker before, turn it off and then afterwards turn it back on if it's decided that's safe for you by your cardiologist. The other issue is, and this is a little bit of a bigger one, um, is that the wires that go, the leads that come from the pacemaker into the heart, anytime you put a magnetic field around a wire, it generates a current. And that has the ability to burn or, or harm the, the myocardium or the muscle in the heart. They're starting to come out with new studies and new, uh, I don't know if it's new, new types of wires that are less susceptible to that, but they're thinking that that is less of an issue, but they have not given us the all clear on that. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis per 
And if you have a card or some information on the particular scam you have, our technologists will vet that out, talk to the company, and, and see if you're eligible to have one. So, great question. Yeah. Any others? Yes. Uh, is the uh, is the patient subjected to more power and the bad aspect of that? No, no, actually. Um, no, yeah, no, it's actually okay. The uh, the Tesla is is kind of the power of the magnets, 1.5 Tesla, which is the same as our old, uh, but it has this one has basically the equivalent of having a computer with better processing power. It's got uh, 48 channels. The old one had, I think, only had four, um, and so those channels uh, equate to better processing power, image quality, and, and faster exams. So. There really hasn't been any known adverse effects from MRI uh, to the body. It's non it doesn't use either radiation. It's basically using magnet and then radio frequencies to generate uh, images. Are you using any dyes with this? We can, yeah. We do a gadolinium. We typically do. Um, and we do it only on a, oh, I would say, Maybe not even a third of the cases. Um, it's it's really helpful in looking, uh, like say for a brain, looking for tumors, metastases, things like that. Or if you do a scan of the body, the liver, the the, the kidneys, same thing. Um, but we we only use it when we feel like it's medically necessary. A patient that's had a history of cancer, that sort of thing, with neurologic symptoms. So. Any others? Good questions, everyone. Before we hit the video, I'd ask uh, if you could, Raleigh, if you could stand up. I don't think we've introduced uh, Raleigh White. He is our new radiology director. He arrived to us and started on 1 April of this year. Uh, Raleigh comes to us with a lot of experience. In addition to the fact, he is a retired Air Force non-commissioned officer. So, welcome, Raleigh. Thank you. Thank you. And good evening to my community. Um, some of the faces are becoming familiar. I see some of the folks that enjoyed our grand opening last week and had just some outstanding questions about our MRI scan. I see those questions continue to come. Um, a gentleman over here kind of joked with me about whether I was encouraged. He caught uh, part of a comment and uh, told him absolutely I'm encouraged because I'm part of a winning team. It is my absolute privilege to be here. I'm here by choice. I wasn't born in Kansas, but I got here as fast as I could, so I hope I get some points for that. But um, my role is administrative in nature. I make sure that I take all the obstacles out of, uh, out of anybody's way that wants to have services here. I do want you to know that you do have choices. If a doctor gives you a physician's order, it is your choice where you have that service performed, and we hope that we, you would choose us. So we are providing the utmost technology. Um, I'm never at, um, I'm always mesmerized actually when I hear our professional partners talk about this technology, and you saw from the pictures how distinctly different the uh, technology that we have on board now is versus what we used to have here. So each time you see that new and exciting thing coming out, uh, you think about well, what information is that offered. So no longer do you have to travel outside of our great community here in Hutch. We have this great technology available to you, not only through MRI, but through ultrasound and CT. We also have very smart people that are doing the business. So all of our technologists are board certified, if you will. They're all certified in specialties and gaining more knowledge. We're required to continue our education every year. So we're getting smarter and smarter so we can be able to provide you the best possible service here in Hutch. So along with our technologists being certified, our radiologists are board certified and some of the best professionals I've had the opportunity to work with in about 25 years. So just know that you have people that will treat you like family here. Know that you have options. And uh, we are ready to take your appointments, ready to serve you at, uh, as early as tomorrow if you want to come see us. So I don't hide my name tag. It's Raleigh, so you know you have a friend in imaging. If you need to look for me, I'll prob you won't have to because I'll probably find you. So keep smiling at me, and once again, I'm very happy to be here in Hutch.
we have a short video. Um, you had a great word picture from Dr. Hobart, but this was just an outstanding situation we had here. If you were able to see that large crane pulling this big monstrosity of a magnet out of the middle of the building. And the most important part about it is we did it safely. You know, we had no incident. There wasn't a whole lot of room on either side of that window. This was truly a celebration for us. Uh, 18 years of history being removed from our building. Uh, a celebration in such a way that um, we did wave goodbye at it, but I heard some awes when we talked about this 18 year technology going out. I will tell you the response on our side was a little bit different. Uh, I won't share the word selection that I heard, but they were very glad to see this one go out in the brand new. Technology does not change what you get, what we get paid by, you know, Medicare or Tricare or anybody else. So there's no difference to you. How's this new equipment compared to what? Yeah, I'll let him. It's his big toy now. Yeah, yeah. 
No, I'd say it's, it's, I don't think there's anything as new as this in Wichita at all. I don't think, there might be one 70 centimeter bore width in the entire city, but I don't, there may or may not be, to be honest with you. This is definitely the biggest. Um, same, um, it, it, it's based, I don't think there's anything that would be better than this in Wichita by any means, even in Kansas City, to be honest with you. I mean, there may be a three Tesla magnet at one of the research centers, which is a little bit more powerful unit. Those have their pluses and minuses. Um, as far as the software package and everything offered by Siemens, this is the best you can get. I mean, there, wasn't, there weren't any options we left on the table when we bought it, so it was really, really all we could get. This was made in Germany, sure did. Uh, so I guess there's some little some tidbits to this. We're going to talk about the new ICU, but the lessons we learned from Joanne and John and that team on how to build it by the staff, for the staff, we then carried over into how we acquired the MRI. The MRI that you see up there went through a deliberate analysis process in which our staff and the physicians vetted three different MRIs and they chose the one they felt was best for our patients as well as the best images, you name it. So if we did a whole you know, a matrix that said what cost, capability, size of the bore, physician satisfaction, ease of use by our staff, and that one was selected head and shoulders above the others. You know, so it wasn't one of those, that was the only thing we looked at. It came out way above. We sent our teams out to facilities that had the different MRI types, and they looked at each one of them, they talked to staff already on the ground, and this is what they chose based on all that analysis, so. It wasn't. In fact, by the time we got, we launched Mark Wilson, our chief of logistics on him. He'll, he'll haggle you down. If you ever need a car, take him with you. <laughs> but he, by the time he got through, we got this one significantly less than what the sticker price was. And it's a 48 coil versus the normal 24 coil, which is what helps you reduce the amount of time you spend in the magnet. We got this 48 coil for the same price as the 24 which is why it's so special for us. The, the street doesn't really change, but the speed, the accuracy, and the fidelity of images do, and that's why we're extremely happy about it. So. And the ability to expand in the future. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. We, uh, we looked at this thing with what other modules can we add to it in the future, and it does have some expansion packs, so, yeah. Very good question. But as far as the region, last time we checked, I don't call anything in Wichita, but there's nothing else in South Central Kansas that can do what we do right now. So, any others? So, yes, sir. Lightning rod or anything? It doesn't. It ha didn't affect our need to put any additional grounding into the ground. I don't, we didn't do anything special. When we decided on this, we had to bring the, the company back in to drill some more pylons into the ground, but by the time they got it done, they, they got plenty of concrete underneath it, so we get rid of the magnetic effect, and this thing's very well shielded. So, yeah. And as a general rule, the whole building is well grounded. Yeah. Are we talking the ICU guys? No, that's just more, the, that's part of the code requirements we have to follow for the National Fire Protection Agency and what kind of grounding we have to have for our electrical receptacles. Because some of them are live, even when we have to have emergency power. So we have to be able to, you know, assess what's live and what's not when we release power. So let's talk about the journey. The MRI is actually part of the ICU journey is the best way I can put it. We knew on the horizon we were going to need to replace the magnet at some point in time. But it's one of those things when I arrived two years ago, I was like, all right, we need to start working on this. But knowing it has an extreme price tag, it was like, when can we? Well, within days of my arrival, the boss over here now in charge of overseeing the new intensive care unit project. This is something that already been in the works for about six months or so. Joe and M's team had taken it from a little sketch drawing 
you know, with an over lunch or breakfast and worked with some architects and came up with what you're going to see as the design. I had the privilege of taking it from there and implementing it from the administration. So this video will show you where, what that dream looks like when it comes from a sketch to reality. But the journey was a long one. It's a circular building. How many of you have a circular house? <laughs> right? So you, you think about the logistics of keeping our regular houses intact. You know, it's nice <coughs> squares, good clean angles, build a circular building. That's your first difficulty. Then two, figure out how you're going to fit everything in it. And then finally you get to the point of, all right, how can I pay for it? Well, we negotiated all of those things. It took a whole lot of work and coordination between us and the city to get the approvals. It took a lot of relationship building between us as the organization and owner with a general contractor who was Navholtz. We worked with Navholtz before, they're the ones who built our emergency department a few years back. Then after that, we selected the right architect. The architect is Health Facilities Group out of Wichita. They have a lot of experience and expertise in designing medical facilities. And then from there, we selected some subcontractors who had the right skills and the right workforce and understood that we are a small community and we wanted our money to stay here. And so we chose Heineken Electric, which is out of Beloit. And then we also chose Cruz, because Cruz is here out of Hutchinson and Wichita. So we kept as much here as we could. From there, that's when we put the project into action. This project has two phases. Phase one was the infrastructure. So a $23 million project was the grand scheme. Two phases, though. Five million of it was just going into the basement in the bowels of the hospital, taking out the old stuff that's been there for 40 to 45 years, replacing it with stuff that needed to be upgraded, changing out our entire fire suppression system and our fire pumps, changing out the entire electrical grid that's there for emergency power, going through replacing almost all the piping in the basement that had to do with the sewage and water lines. That had to be done before we could ever think about going vertical with the new intensive care unit. The current physical structure was pretty sound, but it would not handle the additional 25,000 square feet and the electrical requirements we were getting ready to place on it. So we had to redo the foundation first and the infrastructure before we could go to phase two, which is vertical construction on the intensive care unit. So the total project from when we broke ground in Jan on January 5th of 2017 until we did the today, when we moved the first patients in, has taken about 19 months. The planning factor was 24, so we're ahead of schedule and we're currently under budget. Uh, so we're very happy with that. But that's because we have some great team members and we have some people that own this project. If it weren't for that, I don't think we'd be where we are today. So we'll go ahead and play the video and I'm going to ask, I'll ask Chris to stop at key places and I'll ask Joanne and John to, to interject as needed so they can talk about why and why this is meaningful to them. So. come to the old ICU before we demolished it a couple years back. Same hallway. The hallway did not change. It's the same location that it was before. Keep going. That's what it looks like now. What used to be one long room, we divide to three different segments. We have audiovisual, we have plug-ins, nice comfortable chairs, televisions on each one of those. Pause it. At the end of that hallway, there's an intersection. Going horizontally, you'll go from the emergency department all the way back over to the radiology department where you find Dr. Hobart and Raleigh. If you go vertically, then you're going to be running between the ICU entrance going all the way to the new entrance. At that intersection, we built what is basically a counseling, a serenity room, where the physicians can have those conversations with family members as they need it. Think about most of the time, up till now, when we had to have those conversations, where do those usually occur? In the waiting room, where you're around however many of your closest friends that you never knew before that day, right? <laughs> or it's outside your loved one's room, or it's inside your room. 
these aren't always pleasant conversations. No matter how hard we strive to return people to the highest state of health, we still have some difficult conversations ahead of us. We built this room so that the physicians and the clinicians and any others can have that quiet space and really talk things out away from others who don't need to hear. Next slide. Keep going. Pause it. Joanne, you don't know I'm talking about it, the room. And tell him you can have Chris guide it whenever you want to. But okay. now we're getting into her space. <laughs> yeah. So when we looked at designing this room, and we were very fortunate to be able to be part of that team, uh, the administrative team and the board kind of allowed us to have uh, the ability to, to say, hey, you can look at anything that you want. What would you want? And we started to focus on, you know, what would, if we were a patient, what would be important to us. And part of it was, if you, Chris, can turn towards the face. A little further. Right there where that couch is, that is a space where that desk is and the couch, that couch will flip over into a bed. So if there is a time that somebody needs to stay, that one person can stay in the room with them because we know that uh, patients that are going through this traumatic time have a lot of anxiety, and that's the best time. You know, some people respond a lot better to having their family there, and this gives us the ability to allow you to stay in the room and yet still have your space where you can, um, you know, either work at that desk. You know, we have lots of plugins for computers, or to rest on that couch. So that was very important to us when we were looking at the design. Um, and I'll let John kind of talk just a little bit too because we were both very involved in the design of the room and taking into account the patient's safety. So I'll let John talk a little bit about that. As Joanne said, and I would echo the appreciation, the opportunity we were given to be a part of this uh, project. Um, you know, I was a, a part of a, a, a project before where if money was no object, what would you want? Um, but so the, the dream became, we talked about the drawings. My, I'm no artist and I'm just thankful that the architects didn't use my drawing for the final product because uh, it wouldn't look like what you, what you see here. But um, yeah, just I've been, in, I've been in ICU for 27 plus years now, and so I've had the opportunity and in in, in being in the original unit, this was um, uh, replaced the, the unit, the 16 bed unit that was there. We moved upstairs to what is, well, it sounded like we returned to the women's health and pediatric unit. And so it gave some really good insight into uh, what we came from, what we moved into, and what would what would be uh, what would be possible? What would we like to see uh, if we could have our own? And so, before you, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, roll that some more, uh, just coming on around the area here and uh, the, the sink area, we can have. If you just want to freeze it right there. Um, as I said, I've been a nurse for a while, and one of the things that uh, being in the intensive care. Um, People are there for a reason. We're monitoring their breathing, we're monitoring their uh, heart rhythms, and there are uh, times that it's necessary in a cardiac arrest that we need to come into the room and we need to be able to act very quickly. And so uh, one of the, the uh, ideas that I had seen and, and all the years that I have watched this when, there, when there's an emergency or a code blue and a whole uh, a group of people descend and come into that room, uh, one of the, the Riders needs to get to the head of the bed, as you can see just right around uh, where, the, where the pillow is there, in a very timely fashion. Before, we had plug-ins from electrical plug-ins to, to suction to oxygen tubing, uh, the, the monitor cables from the cardiac monitor that you can see that dark square box in the left upper corner there. All those cords would be coming in towards the wall, where I would watch uh, some, some interesting gyrations and uh, maneuverings of, of these providers trying to, as quickly as they could, step through those and, and, and lower their shoulder and come up on that side. And in an emergency situation, uh, they, they did amazingly well. I never heard anyone complain, nor saw anyone fall or come close to falling, but, but recognize, you know, in those moments, time is really of essence. And so 
the concept of the uh, um, they're, they're called uh, they're articulated arms on the ceiling there and then they're called towers or booms coming down along that has all that we need it has electrical outlets it has uh, the suction that we need if for, for drains and we need to have that to, to suction and oxygen can plug into that should there be an emergency uh, those those articulated arms will pull into the against the bed and enables that care provider to come around the bed unimpeded uh, no hurdles to get to the head of the bed to uh, secure an airway so um, we were grateful for that there was a cost difference obviously with that but uh, as we were able to present that and present it in a way that those people who could make those decisions could understand that uh, we're grateful for that they, they could see that and, and we had the opportunity uh, to purchase that. One of the things that I always like to, to comment that the, the nuts and bolts or the inner workings, where that comes out of the ceiling, you see those two those arms come down, there's a there's a central unit that comes down out of the ceiling, and for each room, there's 18 rooms in the unit, there was a 600 pound weight that they hung off of that. Um, and what they would do when, when you, you can move those arms just by, or those towers by, by pushing with your hand, but you don't want them to drift and bounce into the wall or bounce into a patient who's on a chair. So they had to make sure that, to, to, to check the degrees to make sure that they didn't drift. And if I recall, I don't believe that any of them were really off. They would have been able to adjust that in the ceiling. Uh, so I thought that that was the pretty neat, the nuts and bolts of it, uh, if you will had the opportunity to go to the company uh, that manufactured these and saw how they were put together. And so, uh, you know, that, that part, and I'm very pleased again that we had that opportunity. Um, and you can see the size of the rooms. It just gives us more room to maneuver around. We don't have to spend time moving a chair in order to get closer to the bed or when someone's out of the bed in a chair, I'm doing a lot of prep work to rearrange the room, if you will, to be able to do that. So uh, you can continue to, to roll roll that uh, along. You can freeze it freeze it there again. Yeah, right up in the ceiling, I guess right above that, that wide piece uh, is where that arm went up in there. I thought that might show that a little better. You can continue to roll that. As you can see, aside of just the uh, some, some outlets, some emergency power outlets, and some other equipment, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that is utilized, that can utilize those plug-ins for machines that come in. Uh, each room is equipped, all 18 rooms are equipped with, with plumbing for uh, uh, in, if a patient needs dialysis. Before, I think we had four different rooms, so if someone needed dialysis, we would logistically have to go through moving someone out or trading that patient out of the room, clean that room, and turn it around for someone to come into that. So happily, with, with what we've been able to do with this new unit, all 18 rooms have now had that capacity. We we'll continue there. This is the brand new uh, monitoring equipment we have. It's a company called Space Labs. We've had those throughout. And so uh, this was another opportunity. Wes talked about going early on the project. Uh, it was They finished soon enough with the ICU that we had to jump on it and, and go with the new equipment that we were looking at, but this is, is what we have. Uh, can monitor heart rhythm and, and uh, oxygen levels and other type of monitoring, invasive monitoring that we're able, able to do. Continue there. And those are just some of the, the air, the oxygen that we can plug in. Those are on those towers coming off the, the booms, the articulated arms there, as you can see on the back side there. Oh, okay. Um, one of the things, safety is always an issue, and we talked about what, what we wanted to see in, in, in having a new unit. And, and one of the th things is that to be a safe environment for people. People come in, uh, it's not a familiar place, you're not feeling well, and maybe you're on some medications that don't have you alert, maybe typically uh, what you would be when you're well and, and outside. So um, visualization from the bed to the bathroom uh, was, was part of that uh, that was taken into account. As you can see, there's a direct vis uh, visibility uh, to the bathroom uh, and through the door there. So uh, that, was, that was something that was, we were afforded. And again, uh, I liken this to and being able to build brand new. It's like if you buy a house and you remodel, 
you are, there are certain givens that may be a part of that from where the exterior wall is and some of the structural issues that you just can't make changes. And so um, by being able to build from, from scratch, if you will, uh, we were able to, uh, with this design concept and, and, and have, um, be able to um, utilize uh, the, the space and have the, have the bathroom with the direct visualization. John, can you tell them how you use 3D technology to put those goggles on to also envision this room? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, the, uh, you mentioned um, Health Facilities Group, HFG, out of Wichita, um, were, were the, uh, the architects. And at some point, probably what, about a year or so ago, um, we were invited to go there. They had just purchased uh, 3D software in which uh, that time, I just talked to, to one of the architects the other day, it is now on a laptop that they can just go to, to, to the site and show people and, and, and walk through where, where it is in, in real, with 3D uh, technology. But we went over there, and at that time, that's how quickly it's changed, we put on the goggles, and then you had a little joystick, so you'd run through walls and windows and doors trying to navigate taking this tour that we, you, you saw at the beginning. But from that, and I, I talked to the architects about, you know, it's a good way to save on buyer's remorse because by taking that tour in a 3D uh, idea, we actually made some changes. When you come into the room, you think um, we, we were going to have the call light instead of there was a wall running this way, but we had inadvertently put the cancel of the call light box on the opposite wall. When we were coming in, it's like, well, you know, that's really not the best location for that. So we actually moved it out. Uh, as we come into the room, it's just parallel to where we're walking in. We also made some changes with the uh, the soap dispenser and the uh, and the t the towel dispenser. Made some adjustments there, and we were unable to do that. And had we not, we wouldn't have been really uh, remorseful, but perhaps disappointed that we would have had that that opportunity. So, unless you had your own experience, and I think for you about where the TV was, is yeah, about where the TVs were and. It's one of those you sit there and you put yourself in the position of the patient and say, what do I see if I'm sitting here? Can the TV be shared by you and your family member? So you, that's when we learn what the articulation should be for the television, what the angle should be, what's the right size of television? You know, so by sitting there and looking at those goggles, once, trust me, it was hard. I started sweating after a few minutes. It was, he's right, you walk through walls. It's not a natural feeling. Uh, so I laid down on the bed and did a whole lot of looking. Uh, but it's... We saw the TVs, but we also looked at, all right, is that the right place for the napkin holder? Is that the right place for the garbage can at the sink? Is this, are you going to bust your knuckles on the sink when you open up? It's things that had we not, looking at a two-dimensional two drawing from the architect is easy. They took that, put it in this program, it gave you a whole different view of what you would see. It also allowed us to put ourselves in a position of where the family members will lay or sit. And we, I sat there and looked around and was like, all right, I know I'm going to come here with a laptop or an iPad or something. Where do I plug in? Uh-oh, we don't have enough plug-ins right here. We need to add some more. I'm sitting at this desk. What kind of devices do we have nowadays? What's the standard? USB ports. We didn't have any USB ports. So it allowed us to start figuring out things that are common sense once we open it up, but before then, we anticipated it, so. You can stop it there. Um, one, of the, one of the changes that has come over time is uh, a concept that has come into hospitals and certainly we utilize in this, in this design of this of decentralized nursing. Instead of having one common area where all nurses come in and, and sit, and it's nice to be able to catch up, but I, I refer to the safety factor and being as close to the patients as, as we can be. Uh, so uh, you have a couple of areas here at the desk. You, you can sit uh, right in front of the glass here uh, in front there, but in between, and we may see that if you want to roll the tape uh, again, or the picture again, in between each room is, um, and you can pause it there a minute, I'll, I'll just stop here for a minute because we're there. Through that doorway you see monitors, that is the, uh, the central monitoring, um, the heart monitors for the whole hospital, certainly for the intensive care unit, but uh, some of you may have been in the hospital or you know someone, they were having maybe gallbladder surgery but they've had a heart history 
And so the doctor's concerned about that. How's their heart going to tolerate? You know, they go through the surgery and come out of recovery back up to the floor. And, and to keep an eye on the heart rhythm. So uh, the, the telemetry part is a little, uh, gallons have a little pocket on it. There's a little box uh, that, that slides down a little smaller now than a, the old cassette, portable cassette recorders, but fits down in that box and you can get up and walk around and, and, and that someone needs to be able to monitor that to see what, how the rhythm is doing. And so within uh, that where you can see the monitor, there's someone who sits in there 24 seven and uh, has phone numbers of all, all the nurses throughout the hospital, that, of the patients that are, are on monitors. If there's a problem, the heart rhythm goes too slow or it goes too fast, or there's no heart rhythm at all, the call can be made uh, to be able to, to get, be in contact with that nurse to be able to intervene as, as required. You can continue on there. And we'll freeze it here just a minute to the left and we may see a better picture, but uh, in between, uh, for every two rooms in between is a, is a desk there, uh, and then there's two computer terminals. In the ideal world, it'd be nice to have both, uh, if I have two patients right beside each other. That doesn't always work that way because we, we, we really staff or our patients are assigned on the acuity or, or how sick the person is. If someone, if you have two patients that are not stable, it's not good safety practice for me to have both of those. So, but if it works out that two patients can be side by side, uh, as you can see, there's a window that looks into one room and on just this room here to the left, there's another window that looks in. So if that nurse does have that opportunity to have patients side by side, he or she can sit there and chart and be looking, have direct uh, line of sight into the room on, on either side to the left side um, and, and maintain that visualization. Previously, where would they have to go, John? They could chart there. Where did they have to go to chart? Well, they would be at the team center, which was quite crowded, and uh, just also um, an area that would have to be shared by the care providers, physicians, physicians assistants, uh, nurse practitioners. It's wherever you would see a, com a computer terminal that was vacated, you would sit there and chart. But now, through this, if you go through this uh, area, and in, in in between, um, maybe we'll get there. Is it go in there? Yes, right there we go. Excellent picture there. This is an area for those care providers to be able to have some peace and quiet to be able to go in and sit and chart and focus. Uh, presently where we were upstairs, that, that certainly worked for the interim force, but there was a direct path from the front part of the ICU where we were on women's health and, and pediatrics towards the back. While there were physicians could be sitting there trying to chart and focus and it was just a line of traffic through there. So I'm very happy to see that part of this design and seeing what it looked like, that this is an area for, uh, for those care providers to be able to have their own space and sit and just have some peace and, and quiet and, and, and be able to focus and concentrate on, on the, their piece of the care piece that they, uh, they provide. You can continue on there. It's, Looked like on that other side, we also have a place where it just uh, was there that the computer, on the one end, we also have a pharmacist that is, is on the floor. They are so valuable in medications. Maybe it's a new medication or I need a, a medication emergently. Um, Amanda is, is, is the ICU pharmacist that is assigned to our area. We can, can visit with her, request if we need something right away. She's a great resource for uh, uh, obtaining that and making the call to have that uh, brought to us as soon as possible. And also for, um, for, for new medications, Coumadin and other medicines that uh, someone may be going home, home for the first time. And uh, part of it is, well, what am I taking and why? What do I need to look out for? Pharmacists are quite valuable in their, in, in their course of study that, that allows them to be able to explain. And not that I don't think that's important with other care that we're providing and getting someone ready to go home or give explanation for medications, the pharmacist is able to step into that and a very important part of the team. This now to the outside uh, that we're looking out of view uh, is, is the garden area um, and there's, there's doorways both for the, for, uh, the, the uh, visitors to go out, you know, anyone who has been sick or has family that's uh, 
been, been in the hospital can be a very stressful time and, and part of what we wanted to see and create here uh, is an opportunity for people just to step outside for the breath of fresh air which can do, do a lot of good but also just uh, the, the, the scenery and, and the, vis the visuals that can help bring calm it can't completely take it away but just to change the scenery and be able to experience something different as we as we pause to rest a while from as I, as I tell families it takes energy to care and, and, and ways that besides uh, making sure we're eating enough and getting drink and rest uh, but just a change of scenery can, can I believe uh, is, is a significant part of, uh, for families uh, and loved ones as they as they uh, are there. Anything else, Joy? No, I think we covered it all. So, the, like I said, officially as of 10 30 this morning, we moved our first patient down. The old ICU upstairs is vacant. Uh, well, now we got to figure out what to do with it, right? <laughs> huh? And then, uh, so we're very happy. Do we have, we have a few things we still have to work out the kinks for for the ICU? One, you know, the, our, the landscaper was moving real quick, and all of a sudden we got a few days of straight rain, which means he couldn't go put the sod. So we still have to lay sod down on the back. Uh, we planted more than 2,000 plants into those gardens and behind the MRI and others. So it's very lush. It'll take a little while to settle and get in there. We're also, we have about a month to go before we will get our window blinds. It's one of those, no matter how well you plan, Contractor forgot to put the order in time, so uh, we'd have had a lot of rooms, not a whole lot of privacy. So for the interim, we put in some a, an opaque covering over it, so you still get some light coming in. You can't see out, see the landscaping yet, but it's the best thing to do for privacy. We're still about four weeks out for the the, uh, the window blinds to come in to be installed. We will we will still find things that no matter how well we thought we built it, something just doesn't something's quirky. We'll, we'll do that. John briefly mentioned the telemetry system because we have a lot of positive change going on right now. I mean, we're, we're going through an evolutionary leap with the healthcare system. The ICU was a catalyst. You saw the MRI, how it was driven, you know, as part of this ICU. The next thing that was driven by this was the telemetry system. We were getting ready to move into a brand new state-of-the-art ICU, but we still had a 13-year-old telemetry system. They were starting to get a lot of trouble with the cell phone towers and all, so we completely replaced the telemetry system. We have a house-wide telemetry system throughout the whole facility, and like she said, you can, you can see it down in the ICU. They can see everybody that's wearing that box and those leads. They also still have telemetry upstairs that they can monitor. To, instead of it just being a floor, it's house-wide now. The other thing we've replaced is we're going to one generation of nurse call. I had five generations of nurse call in the hospital. As you renovated a ward, you replaced it. Well, over time, that's how long it had been. The newest addition was in the ED. So now the ED and ICU will have the same generation, and we're working on going every floor, every ward, replacing it to where on the Rollin 5 system. What's important about that, it's almost digital. It's a touchpad versus the old manual stuff. And all these things you hear us talking about will ultimately feed into our new electronic health record, which will go live on September 24th. So if you want to think about it in simplistic terms, we're going from analog to digital. Everything that we see, say, or do will ultimately find its way into the electronic health record that we'll be rolling out. Uh, we call it Millennium, it's CERNA Millennium, and it will basically put us on the map. We'll be a wired facility at that point. So a lot of stuff thrown at you. Thanks for your patience. We've got some time for some questions. Any? Exciting stuff, right? What? Question back there. Oh, oh man, sorry. You put that good camouflage. Either that, I'm really going to run. Are we still able to uh, see the ER or the uh, emergency? This area. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just adjacent to the ED. So from that window where that garden was is where the emergency room is. The ambulance garage actually is right there, but we are in the old space where we were previously. So if you go through the emergency room entrance, you will 
reached the ICU shortly after you hit the ED. So we're very close to them. So Is your yes, question yes. more of, are you still allowed to walk through and look at it? Yes, like okay. tonight or something. Um, well, I'd have to, I'd ask you directly coordinate with Joanne, but we do have patients in there now. So it's a matter of access and privacy for the patients. No, that's a good point. Like I said, I, before I speak for Joanne, I, I yeah. coordinate for her because in reality she owns it now. So it'd be one of her staff that would really walk you around so that we don't create any issues. Yeah. But I'd like to say yes, we can support your request. Let's make it a case by case, a small group basis. That way we don't impact them. Okay. But good question. Fair enough. Any others? Well, it's an exciting time. We, we continue to emphasize that our commitment is to you, our community, our family taking care of yours. So if there's anything we can do to be of service, please don't hesitate to ask. Be safe going home. Thank you all very much.